Hi, I'm Anthony Leckis. Welcome to the program. I'm a radio presenter and broadcaster. Hi, I'm Ruby Susan Mountford, and I'm also a uh, broadcast professional. I don't get paid, but I do a lot of it. We do a lot of unpaid <laughs> work. <laughs> and we, together, we co-host the Triple Bypass show on Joy 94.9 every Tuesday nine at 9pm. So tune in and listen to us. That's right. We're two, two-thirds of the Triple Bypass, the Triple Threat. And yeah, we've been doing the show for over a year now, I think. Yeah. yeah. So Ruby, how did the show come about? Why do we have a radio, pro, a radio show about bisexuality? Well, firstly, you know, um, this was at the, like the the show kind of took off at the same time Joy was rebranding themselves because they've been in the gay and lesbian radio network for a long time, and they're going through a change where they're going to make themselves the LGBTIA network, and so um, they had they hadn't been a bisexuality program on Joy. Um, there'd been, I think, suggestions for one for a while, but. Not to uh, toot my own very loud horn, but um, <laughs> because I was already at Joy doing The Informer, which was um, a show run by the program director there at the time, James Finley, I talked to James at length about the, the lack of bisexual representation at Joy and how there was, no na- there was no mentioning of the B word. And he was like, oh, but there's bisexual presenters. I'm like, do they say they're bi? Because if we're talking on a gay and lesbian station, there will be assumptions. As we know about as right. bisexual people, a lot of assumptions, and so, um, so yeah, I think that was I think at the, I think it was Andy who put the show forward uh, in the end, and he knew you and another person, and James recommended me, and then we all kind of got thrown together. So Joy FM went recruiting for bisexuals. They went on the on the, on yeah, the prowl for bisexuals. Yeah, well, because Andy put the show <laughs> forward, and Andy's a gay man, but he just thought it was a voice that wasn't getting heard, and so then they were like, well, who could host it? And they didn't. Obviously, there was a bit of a buy shortage at Joy if the only person they could find was me. <laughs> because I do talk about it loudly and frequently. So let me so ask you about know. that, Ruby, because I'm just wondering about the, the, the emergence of the show, the very early sort of beginnings and conversations around putting the Triple Bypass show yeah. together came from someone who said, hey, listen, we need a buy show. Is it bisexual people's responsibility to create that sort of noise and attention? Well, that's the thing, because I, I honestly, no. I think much like any group that is marginalised within a community, it is up to, it's never up to the oppressed to solve the, oppre- the problems because we don't create those problems. I think it's similar to how, you know, when it comes to our community, we need to be making space for people of colour, indigenous, indigenous queer people, um, rather than just expecting them to solve all the issues that have been caused by, you know, by issues like white supremacy and colonialism. We can't just say, well, you fix it when it's our problem. I think it's similar in that case. So. We're not the ones that cause biphobia and we don't ignore ourselves. Therefore, learning how to, un- to unlearn those behaviours is not our responsibility. But I do think that... And, and we can kind of see that we do require allies in the community, which we saw from, the you know, a gay guy put the show forward. It got off the ground after a few different attempts because, you know, there were enough people at the studio or even just one or two people at the studio who thought, yeah, this is actually something I've heard about. People are talking about this. I think the way I'd say it is if... Given that, you know, the buyers get a lot of flack for like, you know, not being involved enough in the community and not doing enough around our spaces and not doing enough in the fighting, I think it's not fair to expect people to to jump onto a ledge if you haven't made space for them to land. There's nowhere for us to go we will not move through, which is why we've got such a low like level of activity in the community because right. we don't really feel like there is space there for us. So in that sense, bi people don't usually come out. What are the what are the stats around bisexual women and bisexual men who come yeah, out? Yeah, so this is a so a Pew Society study, which is a, a group in the United States, found that um, I think 28% of bisexual people came out to friends and family, compared to about 75 to 77 for gay and lesbian people. And of that, only 12% of bi men ever came out to their friends and family. And um, they also found about 66% of bisexual people who were out had either no or very low levels of it, like felt uh, like uh, engagement with the community. Right. So you know that kind of like, um, and I, but again, it's like that kind of vicious cycle because there aren't people who are bisexual open in the community and campaigning. But there are, of course. You know, we've got organisations in the states, particularly. Um, but yeah, so it kind of creates a thing of our voice is not particularly loud because not many of us are public. And those of us that are public are having to yell a lot louder than everybody else to be heard at all. Right. So I think, yeah, I'm good at that. I'm very, very loud yelling. Yes. Well, we do like to yell. I mean, uh, you know, Squeaky by fury wheels. tends to motivate quite a lot of the yelling. There's a bit of that. But there's a very good reason for by fury. I think so. I mean, there's, what, what happens when usually when bisexual people come out? Let's stay within the queer community because that's important. Oh, I think, well, that again can come down to gender. So I'm going to use just the two binary genders just for the sake of the explanation and for the way the studies have been built. But I feel like the default generally was, so I was first told by a lesbian that no lesbian would ever date a bisexual woman when I was 16. And um, 
So that was obviously the first time I was basically told, no, you won't really be welcome and you won't be loved. Mm. Um, and for bi women, there tends to be a lot of assumptions around lesbians uh, thinking we'll leave them for men. Um, or they might have had one experience with a bisexual woman, which then, like, you know, who did go on to date a man, they kind of take that as a, an right. issue with that. For bi men, obviously I can't speak about this as well as you can, Anthony, but uh, it seems to be more of the default is that, no, you're just gay and you're not brave enough to come all the way out of the closet. One of the things I hear a lot is uh, bi now, gay later. Yeah. And, and I think that there is, once that once you once you go to cock, yeah. that you will be obsessed with cock and that's all you'll ever need. It does seem to be like a bit <laughs> of a default to the dick, which is, you know, um, and like, you know, and of course, uh, we can move on from phallic stuff. You know, lesbians have solved that issue a long time ago. Sex toys <laughs> exist. It's fine. But, you know... Um, I just I do think it's interesting that, that that there is that huge level of distrust, and I think that's one of the stereotypes that we get to deal with a lot: the label of being distrustful and being not someone you can trust to be in a relationship with, and not someone you can trust to not cheat on you. Because apparently, if you and a lot of the arguments they have against us are a bit self contradictory. So, firstly, we don't exist, but then if we do exist, we can't be trusted because we won't stay loyal. Because even though people can't like more than one gender, apparently, if a bisexual person's in a relationship, they'll always want the gender they don't currently have right. because they are attracted to both genders. Yes. So, it can we create a lot of problems for people, don't so we? So many paradoxes. <laughs> it's great. We're like time lords. So, uh, you know, one of the things that we have talked about on the show is uh, just how inconvenient bisexuality can be for non-bi people. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot, often a lot of explaining to do. We have to challenge quite a lot of these myths and assumptions. There's that a lot of education, about. I think, that goes on with it. Like, you know, um, and again, I think it's just because even though there has been studies that have been done in Australia and in a lot of other countries for decades, we don't seem to actually be doing anything with that with that information. Like, you know, we now know that bisexual people have worse mental health outcomes than lesbian and gay people. That's been known for over a decade. But it's only been this year that someone's actually said, well, what can we do about that? And what exactly, what are the reasons for that? And what should we be doing to fix it? So right. I think there's a lot of, as you're talking about before, by fury in that we keep, if we are, if we have got our ears to the ground, we hear that people are aware that we are facing a lot of problems. Yes. But no one seems to want to actually do anything about right. it. Well, we have started. We have there, started. There, there, we are crawling. We will be walking and running soon. In and, the and there's been people, members of the community, including James, who's out, who's out the third member of Triple Bypass, who helped found the, you know, the, Victor the Victorian Bi Alliance, right. which has, you know, been one of the oldest groups, like for bisexuals in Australia, was the first uh, bisexual group to march in Pride. Right. They got heckled. Yes. Well, the only group that's ever needed marshals to walk along beside them yeah. to keep them safe at Pride March, which yeah. is meant to be a celebration and a safe space. Yeah, so we, we apparently we're not allowed to be proud, which I've, I think, you know, and, and that's something that I see from even other bisexuals seem to have taken this on board. Like, if you're in a heterosexual relationship, don't come to Pride, it's not for you. But of course, no relationship I'm in will ever be heterosexual because I'm not a heterosexual person. Right. Well, we talk about all these sorts of things on the Triple Bypass Show. We do. So if you want to listen to Ruby and myself and James, uh, tune in to Joy 94.9 at 9pm every Tuesday night. Or you can also, we also have a podcast, um, which has, we've been producing that for about a year as well. And so that's basically just like a cap up. That's the entire show without all the uh, the ads and bits. Right. And that's um, at joy.org.au forward slash triple bypass. Ruby, thank you so much for talking to me today. It's been <laughs> awesome to talk about bi stuff with you as always. Always a pleasure, Anthony. Always a pleasure. I'm Anthony Leckis. Thanks for watching.